Hey everyone, my name's Rowan Abilia. I'm a content designer at Atlassian and I'm here to talk to you about creating inclusive experiences using the Atlassian design system. At Atlassian, 83% of people who use our products use them in English. But more interestingly, 45% of those people are actually in countries where English is spoken as a second language. And that's an interesting conundrum, because how do you go about communicating with, writing for, and making this global group of people feel included? It's more than just about being able to put things into Google Translate. Let's look at some examples. Exhibit A, everyone's favorite kind of coffee. Tasteless coffee? Just like mom used to make, but maybe a little lost in translation. And I think this one was a little lost in translation too. And I think you're starting to see my point. So after we talk about inclusive language, what it is and why you should care, we'll look at some elements that help break it down. We'll talk about the WCAG and why it's not just my subjective opinion. We'll go through some do's and don'ts. We'll discuss how being inclusive doesn't mean having no personality. And finally, we'll look at some ways in which you can bring inclusive language into your work. So what is inclusive language? I think in short, it's just about being human. It's essentially understanding your audience, empathizing and reflecting on their needs and having a good conversation. It's how you would speak to someone in real life to make them feel safe or comfortable, confident or assured essentially included. And while some of this is more modern and new and can be a bit confusing to some people, and it's important that if you aren't sure, that you ask. Strive to include language that reflects the people's choices and style of how they talk about themselves. But why should you care? Well, firstly, because your products need to work for multiple markets. You wanna make sure that the language that you use in your error messages, your help strings, the navigation, the buttons, and everything in between is inclusive and accessible, accessible enough to reach a wider audience without isolating groups of people. Secondly, because while this talk isn't actually about internationalization, an area we know Atlassian has some ways to go in, it's about strengthening that step before. And if we can be ready to make our initial strings and product content easier to understand in English and help our app developers do the same, it's much easier when it's time to internationalize everything. And while you can't always get something perfect and easy to translate, sometimes you'll need to pander for the majority or create custom content that caters to different linguistic communities. And thirdly, one for my content buds out there, because while poor copy might be a reason for people to leave your product, good inclusive copy can actually be a reason that they stay. So how do we be inclusive? Let's talk about some of the techniques that we use at Atlassian. Making complex things simple. This is all about using clear, concise language. People need to understand what you're actually talking about and that the core message that you're trying to share isn't blurred or complicated. Make sure that your text is meaningful and concentrated on a goal. How can you be more human, authentic, and simple? Use that voice to achieve this. Empower your users. Give them the information that they need to get their work done. Avoid using things like idioms that everyone may not actually understand and make sure it's all useful to them. They don't really have all day. And thirdly, build trust in every interaction. Make sure that the language in all your products has the same style, the same tone, voice, and terminology. Consider your naming conventions, for example. If you're gonna call something a trash bin, a rubbish tip or a junkyard, make sure you do this consistently across all of your products. But again, like I said, it's not just my subjective opinion. We've actually got some legitimate documented proof about why it's important to care. Let's talk WCAG. WCAG, as I like to call it, is the Web Content Accessibility Guideline. It's a global document developed by individuals and organizations around the world that outlines practical ways in which you can make your digital content, your emails, your call to actions, links, documentation, et cetera, more accessible to this broader audience. 
Meeting accessibility requirements is actually an important step in making your content inclusive. But where do you start? Well, according to the WCAG, readability is actually an accessibility issue now. Essentially, it's how well people can read and then understand your content. At Atlassian, this is everything from product messaging to support documentation. Content with a good readability level helps users know what to do, making it more inclusive for people who may have a lower comprehension level. To achieve an appropriate level of readability, though, you kind of want to start by looking at unusual words, acronyms and abbreviations, and the reading level of your content. Unusual words can sometimes be a bit bewildering for your users. Avoid using them where possible and make sure that you, when you do use an unusual word, that you explain it by providing a glossary. Abbreviations and acronyms. While we all know how much a tech company loves a good acronym, they can be extremely inaccessible for people with disabilities or those who speak English as a second language. Make sure that every page expands all your abbreviations and acronyms in their first use. And thirdly, reading level. Consider your reading level. Plain English is beneficial to all your readers, but it's actually essential for some. But what is plain English? It's not baby talk, nor is it a simplified version of the English language. It's simply just the most concise, straightforward way of getting your message across. A lot of newspapers like the New York Times actually write to a 10th grade reading level, and the Australian government reading level is actually an eighth grade. So this is everything that you read in your tax information, et cetera. And as you can see at Atlassian, sometimes we go even younger. But now let's talk about some categories where people slip up. Culture and religion. Here, best practices would be to avoid using terms or phrases that have religious origins. Don't use expressions and ignore history and achievements of any culture. Avoid using language where cultural beliefs, values, and traditions are centered on a dominant culture, or perhaps those that perpetuate a them and us mentality. Race and ethnicity. Avoid emphasis on differences between groups of people. Avoid stereotyping positive and negative generalizations. Avoid promotions of ethnic and racial invisibility. Ableism. Here, it's good to only mention disabilities when it's relevant. If you've designed a feature specifically for blind people, great, but you don't need, you can avoid throwing it into your text when it's not relevant. Focus on the person rather than the disability and avoid suggesting victimhood. Vulgar language. Don't use sexual references ever. Avoid profanities and love and romance are fine, but just stay out of the bedroom. Sexism. Best practices are to use gender neutral terms. Reduce unnecessary or irrelevant references to personal characteristics that are based on gender or male related terms. Avoid referencing a person's gender, except when it's pertinent to the discussion and don't use language that privileges men and renders women invisible or inferior. Sexual orientation and gender. Avoid language that reinforces the assumption that all personal relationships are actually heterosexual and denies the reality of same-sex relationships. Avoid stereotyping LGBTQI plus people and placing limitations or expectations on people because they belong to a certain group. It's damaging, hurtful, and discriminatory. Avoid phrases that disparage or trivialize the diversity as well of LGBTQI plus people. Ageism. Inclusive language should be sensitive to the entire age range. Terms such as older or younger are relative and should be used with clarity and in context. You can use more neutral terms that aren't definitive, such as older people or younger people. Avoid terms that limit and categorize. Instead, choose terms such as older adults or aging population, or mention the person's relative age in relation to other people. And lastly, socioeconomic status. It's best to treat all people fairly. Common sense, but regardless of where they come from or what they do, it's best to avoid negative terms based on where someone's from, and only mention, without judgment of course, when relevant to the discussion. So, all of this does not mean that inclusive language is cumbersome or dull or vague. 
it simply means language that is carefully constructed in a way that treats all people with respect and impartiality. And at this point, you're probably thinking, how do you build a style and speak in your unique way while also watching every single thing that you say? At Atlassian, we use voice and tone guidelines and writing style. It allows us to modulate our tone depending on our emotion, the mood, the mindset, the location and product, and the ability of the person using the product without sacrificing all of that inclusivity. One that is bold and motivates teams to do their best work, optimistic, gives people the confidence they need in our products, and practical with a wink. We deliver appropriate delight and celebrate success or progress once we've built their trust. I've talked a lot about being inclusive and how Atlassian strives to be better. Now it's time to get inclusive with your teams and action some of these changes. You don't need a bunch of kick-ass content designers and you don't need to go ahead and rewrite all of your content. It's just about taking responsibility and paying attention to some of the language that you're already using. So what can you do? Look at building inclusive language into your processes. For example, at Atlassian, checking for inclusive language is actually part of our naming processes and guidelines. Pick a sizable project that's customer facing and carry out an audit, review it and create some best practices, and then use these best practices to move forward with your processes and go slowly from there. Here's a little checklist for when you're trying to be inclusive. It might be useful to keep you following some generic questions in mind. Firstly, do you need to refer to a personal characteristic such as sex, religion, a racial group, disability, or age at all? Are there references to group characteristics couched in inclusive terms? Do your references to people reflect the diversity of your actual audience? And is the use of jargons and acronyms excluding people who may not have a specialized knowledge of the particular subject? If you're stuck at any point, remember that you can actually head to atlassian.design forward slash content where you can find all of the information in my talk. And on a quick final note, remember, every interaction is an opportunity to do better. <laughs>